large city and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Mr. Dillon, come over here at the window and take a look at this fella. I'm busy, Chester. Yes, sir, I know, but you just got to. Well, he's the doggonest thing you ever saw. Please, Mr. Dillon, before he goes away. Well, I can't write while you're talking. Look at that. See? In the coonskin hat across the street there? Uh, Why, he looks to be eight feet tall. That's because he's so skinny. And that long rifle. Looks like a fish pole. (laughs) How's he going to shoot buffalo with that? He's a squirrel hunter, Chester. That's a southern mountain man. Now, that fellow he's talking to now is pointing this way. Oh, oh, here he comes. Howdy. Hello. Well, come on in. Be you the... Uh, what you call him? Oh, the marshal? Uh, I'm again schools and education. Never heard nothing called marshal. What? Uh, I'm a peace officer. I'm a country man. I'm again towns, too, and jail houses. Well, so am I, but sometimes they're necessary. No, they ain't. No more than the law is. It ain't fitting for some folks to be meddling in other folks' business. Oh? Uh-huh. Well, where do they figure it like that, stranger? The uh, Ozark Mountains? Better country than this. My name's Luke Humberg. Mine's Dillon. Uh, this is Chester Proudfoot. Uh, how do you do? I know the fella called Proudfoot once. That's so? Yeah. Well, there ain't too many of us. It might be a relation of some kind. All I remember is how he crimped up every time I kicked him in the belly. He did? Marshal, man outside said you'd help me find where Hank Witherspoon's living. Witherspoon? Yeah. Oh, the one who came out here about a year ago? He's got an old mountain gal with him. They're married. Sure, I know them. They got a place up near Rock Springs, about ten miles north of here. What kind of place? Oh, just a shack and a patch of corn, as I remember. I'll find it. Well, you come a long way to see your friends, Humbird. The Witherspoon ain't exactly a friend, Marshal. I got to get going, it being Saturday and all. Uh, wait a minute. Huh? What are you talking about? Nothing. Except I won't kill no man on a Sunday, Marshal. I never have, and I never will. You think Humbird meant what he said, Mr. Dillon? He's too mountain simple to lie, Chester. Yes, sir. Hey, look, there's Miss Witherspoon now out in the corn patch. Yeah, I guess it'd be polite to stop and say hello to her first. Come on. Hello, Miss Witherspoon. Howdy, Marshal. You too, Chester. How are you, ma'am? Poorly. Hank's done healed it into Dodge, Marshal. Don't you know today's Saturday? Oh, what's Saturday got to do with it? Every Saturday Hank's in Dodge. He don't come back till Sunday night. Well, that's funny. I don't recall seeing him in town much. He's got his ways, Hank has. He goes to town, but he ain't too sociable. I see. Uh, Miss Witherspoon, do you and Hank know a man called Luke Humbird? Humbird? Don't say his name around us, Marshal. Oh, there's trouble between you? Trouble. Marshal, 
Hank's the only Witherspoon left, and Luke's the only Humbird. Both families been whittled down to just them two. Oh, a feud, huh? Their grandpa started it. Now there's only one man left on each side. Well, don't you think it's gone far enough? Hank or Humbird. Either one of them could call it off, only they're both too muley for that. Well, didn't Hank come out here to, uh, well, get away from it? Of course not. He's always talking about going back long enough to kill Luke Humbird. Oh, uh, how'd this feud start, ma'am? Well, they say Hank's grandpa stopped by the Humbirds one day and they asked him to set and eat. He did. Dinner was slow cooking, and he got to hollering about it. Sat there pounding on the table with his knife just a faunching and a slavering for his vittles until Luke Humbird's grandpa, he took offense and told them not to feed him at all. He went off mad. They've been feuding ever since. Well, forever. You mean they're still fighting over that? Of course they are. Where'd you see Luke Humbird? Oh, he was in Dodge asking about Hank. That's bad, Marshal. Hank don't even know he's around. Well, that's why I came out here. Hank ought to be told. He's better shot than Humbird any day. Look, Miss Witherspoon, the law doesn't recognize a feud as justification for murder. If one of them kills the other, he's going to hang for it. I never hear tell of no such law, Marshal. You're making that up. No, it's, it's true, Miss Witherspoon. I've warned Humbird, and I'm going to warn Hank. They'll shoot you, you start meddling. These people just don't understand nothing, Mr. Dillon. I'm worried about Hank. He'll be drunk as soon as it's dark. Oh, well, I'll, I'll find him. Goodbye, ma'am. You better find him, Marshal. He'll get killed, sure, if you don't. Yeah. Come on, sister. Are hill people all like that, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, they're mighty independent, Chester. They're mighty crazy, if you ask me. Why, it's like they don't even hear what you're saying. Well, I guess anything to do with the law is a new experience for them. Now, look over there, Chester. Huh? By that little bluff over to your right there. Well, I'll... How'd he get out here? Well, let's go ask him. Hello, Humbird. That Witherspoon's place, Marshal. You don't care whether you hang or not, do you? For shooting the Witherspoon? For shooting anybody. Marshal, you're getting downright contrary. Humbird, why don't you take that squirrel rifle and go on back home? Because it ain't no squirrel rifle, that's why. This here is a human rifle, Marshal. Oh, there's no use even talking to him, Mr. Dillon. Where's your horse, huh, Bird? Uh, how did you get out here, anyway? I come afoot. I don't need no horse to travel by. You mean you walked all the way from the Ozarks? It ain't far. When they's Witherspoon are waiting at the end of it. Uh, maybe I ought to just throw you in jail for a while. Well, then nobody get killed, Marshal. At least not till I got out again. But you're being awful meddlesome. I gotta get closer to that house. So long. Now, don't worry. I don't aim to shoot his old lady. Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Maybe it'd be better if you just let them shoot each other and have done with it. Don't tempt me, Chester. Well, let's go find Witherspoon. <laughs> go ask Sam if he's seen Witherspoon, Chester. All right, sir. Hello, Matt. How are you, kitty? Things have been pretty quiet around here for Saturday night. Well, I'm not complaining about it. 
The Santa Fe agent told me there's a big Texas herd due to be shipped out of here in a couple of days. Well, those boys will liven things up for you. Yeah, for you too, I expect. Where you been, Matt? It's pretty near midnight. Kitty, I've been trying to stop a feud. A feud? Yeah. What kind of feud? An old one. There's only one man left on each side. <laughs> been a long time since I've heard of a feud around Dodge. Well, this one kind of got transplanted from the Ozarks. Oh. Say, don't tell me that crazy Hank Witherspoon's mixed up in it. I've been trying to find him all evening. You know where he hides out? <laughs> I bet you a dollar he's right out back, Matt. What? Regular as clockwork. Every Saturday night he comes in carrying a long rifle and buys a bottle of corn from Sam and takes it out back and drinks it. All alone, as far as I know. He just sits there, looking at the moon and drinking his whiskey. Never causes any trouble. Eh? Oh, no wonder I never see him around. <laughs> uh, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, I know, sir. Chester. Kitty just told me. Go see if he's there. Bring him in, will you? Yes, sir. Uh, who's he feuding with, Matt? A fellow by the name of Luke Humbird. I never heard of him. He just arrived today on foot. On foot? Yeah, he's all legs, Kitty. A real traveling man. Well... If he's anything like as weird as Hank Witherspoon, you've got a problem on your hands. Yeah, I know. Well, here he is, Mr. Dillon. I made him leave his rifle outside. Hello, Hank. Now, what do you want with me, Marshal? I don't like it all cooped up in here. Hank, Luke Humbird is looking for you. <laughs> Humbird's and the Witherspoon's been looking for each other nigh on to 40 years, Marshal. They most all got found. How drunk are you, Hank? Well, Marshal, my old woman won't allow no drinking on the place, so I gotta come into town every Saturday. Hank Witherspoon. It's Humbird, Mr. Dillon. I got you caught like a bar up a tree, Hank. But down that rifle, Humbird. If you're gonna kill me, I ain't even got my gun. <laughs> Put it down, I said. Get out of the way, Marshal. I'll shoot you, too, if you don't. Now, you listen to me. Hey, wait wait a minute, everybody. I just thought of something. Why don't all you folks stop a meddling in this? It's after midnight, Humbird. What? It's Sunday. Sunday? Oh, no. Yeah, he's right, Humbird. Well, of all the gall blame luck, now I'll have to put off killing you, Hank. I won't shoot a man on Sunday, even a witherspoon. Well, of course you won't. Hey, Luke, you sure travel a long ways. Well, I got tired waiting for you to come back home. I was figuring coming back this summer for a spell, alone. I know. I seen your old lady scratching around in that corn patch. She said she ain't never going back hard as it is here. Oh, well, fellers can make a crop here sometimes, Luke. Yeah. But it's a hard fight with a short stick. You got no hogs out there. Where are your hogs, Hank? I'll be getting some. Oh. Hey, Luke, I'll tell you something. What? I got me a little jug out back. It's most empty now, but we could maybe buy us another one and set out there for a spell and kind of kind of get soured on the cob. We might as well. We can't do no shooting till Monday. Where do we buy this whiskey? I'll show you. Feller over here, he sells it. You'll have to lend me some money, Hank. Sure. I didn't bring none with me. <laughs> well, if that don't beat all... Matt, why don't you put him in a cage and send him back where they came from? I'd like to, Kitty. <laughs> People here are getting quite a kick out of this. Yeah, I know. Those two hillbillies are making me look like a fool, and I don't know what to do about it. And the limb's about as easy as trying to stop it from raining. Well, I'm going to bed.
Chester around? Uh, he went across the street for a beer, Doc. He ought to be back soon. Well, it can wait till morning. Uh, well, Matt, I've been hearing all day about your feuding mountaineers. Yeah, they've been drunk all day, lying around out back of the Texas Trail. The shooting won't start till midnight. Oh, you're going to let them uh, go ahead with it? And I've about decided to throw him in jail. Give me time to think of some way to get rid of him. Well, that's a good idea, Matt. <laughs> Now, people are saying that this is the first time you've run into something that you can't handle. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're kind of enjoying it, too. I'll bet they are. <laughs> yeah, and all over a couple of crazy... <laughs> What's that? That was a rifle shot, Doc. A long-barreled human rifle. Now, you might as well come along. <laughs> I thought they were against shooting each other on Sunday, Matt. I thought they were, too, Doc. Maybe they got so drunk they forgot. Yeah, well, it sure, sure looks that way. Now, watch your step, Doc. It's pretty dark back here. Over here, Mr. Dillon. His Humbird got shot. I was right inside when I heard it. Oh, that's old here, here. Let me take a look at it. What's the matter with Hank, Chester? He looks like he's been shot, too. Too much corn whiskey, I guess. Yeah. Uh, scoop some water out of that rain barrel there and throw it on him, huh? What? What's that you're doing now, Luke? Give him huh? some more, Chester. Okay. Oh. Hey, now stop that, I tell you. You're making me all wet. Say, say man, yeah. this man over here is still alive. Uh, let's get him over to my office. Uh, give Doc a hand there, a couple of you men, huh? Oh, I can. Luke, huh? Where at's my rifle? I got your rifle right here, Hank. Did you shoot him, Hank? Well, sure. I was aiming to, I guess. How could you shoot him if you were passed out? Well, I don't know, Marshal. We got pretty drunk. I thought neither of you would shoot a man on Sunday. Well, no, of course not. Why did you, then? You mean it's still Sunday? Hank, I don't believe you did this. Marshal, you quit messing around. I'll shoot you next. Chester. Yes, sir. Throw him in jail. I'm going to take a look around. Jail? I ain't going to jail. Come on, get Wait. moving, Hank. No. Come on, I'll poke this rifle right through. Hey, quit that. Well, then start walking. If you put me in jail, I'll just bust right out again. Oh, no, you won't. Not if I have to break your leg. Who's that? All right, hold it right there. Hold it or I'll shoot. All right, that's better. Now get your hands up. Well, I'll be... I ain't armed, Marshal. Put your hands down, Ms. Witherspoon. What are you chasing me for? I'm a woman, Marshal. Come along, ma'am. I'll put you in the same cell with your husband. Well, I just give them their breakfast, Mr. Dillon. Hello, Doc. Morning, Chester. How's Luke Humbird doing? Well, I was just telling Matt. It's like shooting a bullet through water with that man. Oh, he's not about to die. Yeah, that's good news, I guess. <sighs> well, I'm going to talk to the Witherspoons. You two waiting here, huh? Morning, Hank. Ma'am. Morning, Marshal. You come on out to our place someday, Marshal. I'll cook you a better breakfast than you give us here. Uh, thanks, ma'am. But it might be a long time before... You go home. I've been trying to explain things to Hank, Marshal. Oh? He's still arguing he shot Lou Cumberg. But even he don't believe it. You're admitting that you did? Of course I did. You know it. Hank is too drunk. Cumberg's all right. He's going to live. But you'll still have to stand trial for attempted murder, Miss Witherspoon. Judge ain't going to do nothing to a woman. What'd you go do it for anyways? Feuding is a man's job. I got to thinking, that's why. I'm worrying. About what? About you being too drunk to fight come Monday. 
And when I seen you laying around out back there, I knowed I was right, so I took your rifle and shot him. Don't you know if you'd killed Humbert and I hadn't caught you, Hank would hang for this. You're still saying that, Marshal. Oh, don't pay him no mind, woman. Hey, Marshal, when are you going to let me out of here? So you can go shoot Luke Humbert? No. No, you're staying here, Hank. You can't keep him locked up, Marshal. Yes, I can. No. Man. No. It's all a mistake. I didn't have to shoot Luke at all. What? Well, the reason they got so drunk was they were celebrating. Celebrating what? They decided to call the feud off, Marshal. Both of them at the same time. Luke Humberg's going to come out, go to work for Hank. And he's going to live on the place. They got it all figured out. They's too drunk to tell me. Uh, Ms. Witherspoon. Huh? I'll go talk to the judge, if you'll do me a favor. Huh? Why, sure, Marshal. Go on home and take Hank with you, and I'll send Humbert out as soon as he's well enough to travel and keep him out of Dodge. Will you? Please? Both of them? Sure, I will. Come on, Hank. Your drinking days is over. Gunsmoke, transcribed under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Virginia Gregg, John Daner, and Lawrence Dubkin, Parley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke.